So good afternoon, I'm Pastor Kendall Stelter from Grace Lutheran in Providence Valley Lutheran Church, and I'm just happy to be with you in this building. I'm uh, in the chapel right now, and I know you're worshiping from your rooms, but we are uh, together in this way. And uh, so this is uh, our, our Christmas service, so we're going to sing together, O Come All Ye Faithful. join with me um, as I lead in our confession and forgiveness. So let's bow our heads in prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And then receive God's forgiveness. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And then our Holy Gospel reading for this afternoon is a reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. 
And her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son and named him Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I've always envied those who are amazing sleepers, kind of like now my uh, college-aged children who can come home from school and, uh, and they can sleep all morning long. Uh, I, on the other hand, can't do that anymore. In fact, recently, uh, I even have occasional sleepless nights. Um, uh, most recently, I've been waking up with all the concerns I hold on my heart in the midst of this pandemic. And I'm praying especially for those of you who are vulnerable, those who uh, in our nation who have lost jobs, uh, uh, those people who are maybe sandwiched between jobs and, and caring for others in their family, and of course those who feel lonely or isolated. Uh, those people also are in my thoughts and my prayers who are kind of working on the front lines in this time, those that work here in this place and provide care to many of you, and then also all of our medical staff around the nation. May the grace of Jesus protect and sustain us all in this time. My mind kind of brings me to uh, the King James Version of the Bible from First Peter, where the scripture beckons us to cast all of our cares upon God because God cares for us. And I'll confess that I've often thought of this verse as kind of maybe kind of trite bumper sticker theology, and I've taken it to mean one of two things. The first option is when we love God, we will automatically be protected by a worry force field that allows our anxieties to just kind of bounce right off of us. And then the second is we will sling our worries as fast as we can toward God with the speed of maybe a softball or a baseball pitcher so they can never bother us. The trouble is following Jesus isn't a protection against worry. And the worries that keep us up at night are not lightweight, or at least they seem especially heavy before dawn. Instead, I think casting your cares upon Jesus is really hard work. It means acknowledging each worry. It means praying about each burden. It means then lugging it toward Jesus, sometimes at the slow speed of a moving boulder. In this season of pandemic, it's okay to have worries that you just can't budge as well. It's okay to be sad about people you can't be with right now and people that you cannot hug right now. It's okay to be disappointed in trips that you can't take or experiences that can't happen right now. It's okay to be tired of staying in your room or staying at home, but we do so we do so to take care of one another. And it's okay to be cranky. It's okay that you can't be all things to all people. And it's okay not to do the things that you normally do. I remember going to Greensburg, Kansas a while back with my son Noah and other friends of ours. 
at, uh, in, of my congregation to help after their town about the size of Dawson was devastated and basically just leveled because of a tornado. And so we went there to do some work to help them out. And we were assigned to a building site where there once stood a brick building and there was just a pile of bricks that once made for that nice structure. And our assignment was to chip the mortar off the bricks so that they could be used again to rebuild. So some of us with hammers and chisels went to work. My son Noah and I discovered that if you just hurled the rocks uh, on the ground, that some of that mortar would fall off as well. So that is what we did all day. We did this all day, brick by brick by brick. And so it was our job to throw the bricks and move the bricks and stack the bricks and chisel the bricks. And so once the brick had the mortar on, then we would move them in a wheelbarrow and then we would stack them. We stacked a pile of bricks that was higher than this tree and maybe twice as wide. We did it all day. And clearly I had not moved bricks prior to our service in Greensburg, Kansas. And so at the end of the day, all that manual labor, my arms just felt like jello. I was completely, utterly exhausted. Throwing bricks is hard work. And so is casting all of your cares on Jesus. That's hard work too. It's not automatic. It's not quick. It's slow. It's difficult. It's intentional, spiritual labor. It requires prayer. It requires letting go. And it requires trusting. And in this season of pandemic, may God give us the strength to throw even our heaviest burdens a little closer to Jesus and in his love rest a little easier at night and sing with all of the angels this Christmas because Christmas is about God Emmanuel with us with you and so that is the blessing of Christmas and that is why we can even sing in this difficult time when we're casting all of our cares upon Jesus we sing at Christmas, and in that singing, that allows us to cast our cares to Jesus. And so we do so with these familiar and with these dear Christmas carols that we sing together this afternoon.
And then let us join together in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then we pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue to cast your cares on Jesus this day and in the days ahead. Have a very blessed Christmas. And thank you for allowing me to come into your rooms today to share in this worship time with you. Peace be with you. Amen.